This is the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose, where I strategize with business owners on how to grow and scale their businesses to hit their income goals. This is episode 296 of the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose. Today, we're going to talk about how to social media detox as business owner. We've been leading up to this back in episode 294 we of, where we talked about a social media detox benefits. We actually talked about the benefits of a social media detox, what those look like. We talked about how about this isn't something that needs to be done cold turkey, but is something we should do with insights from our engagement and revenue in mind for our business. Today, we're actually going to dive into how to social media detox so that we can have those benefits. Because as you saw from that episode back in 294, it is so beneficial. So the first thing that we need to do is to determine which platforms to do detox from. We talked about that it's important to understand where our people are interacting with us, that it's actually impacting us our business, showing some ROI so that we can slowly wean ourselves from those platforms or decide that we're not seeing any benefit anymore from these platforms. There's no reason to take the time to actively engage there and to continue to create new content for it. So you need to be able to sit back and determine which platforms to detox from. And again, like we said before, it doesn't necessarily have to be done completely cold turkey. You can decide Instagram is the one that I am continually talking to my people on. I need to consistently create some content there. I'm not ready to give that one up, but I'll give up Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, TikTok, whatever else might it look like for you. Now, As part of this detox, the second step that you need to make sure that you do is to keep those website windows closed. My bloggers know what I'm talking about. I get on with clients all the time and they will say, oh, my computer's so slow. I have 37 windows open. And I am definitely one that also has, (laughs) that does that every once in a while as well. So keep those windows closed. You do not need to have Facebook or the Instagram as one of the windows that are actually open on your computer when you are working. The next piece of this is to silence all notifications on your phone. If you are getting notifications from Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, Twitter, wherever you're potentially getting actual notifications on your phone from, make sure that they are silenced if they are not already. How you don't have them silenced already, gosh, goodness, Bless you, because that is definitely something was one of the very first steps that I have ever taken when I got my cell phone is to make sure that things were actually silenced. So the next step, if silencing isn't enough and you need more of a detox to make sure that you are not going into those apps that are on your phone, the next step is to actually delete the apps from your phone. Just they'll be gone. I'm not telling you to delete your Instagram account or delete your TikTok account. That is not what I'm saying. I'm telling you to delete the apps so that while you're going through this detox, you do not rely on it and quickly just revert back to unconsciously picking up your phone and going into those social media apps. How many times have you done that in the past? We want to make sure that you don't have the ability to do that. And by deleting those apps, it will allow that. The next thing is to use your detox time for health benefits. So a lot of times I know myself when I am in line for pickup to pick up my kids or waiting for my daughter to get out of dance, I will scroll through my social media platforms. So if I'm using that time to detox and instead of using it to go through social media, I'm going to use it for a health benefit. Now, instead, maybe I'm going to sit in the car and I'm going to meditate, or I'm going to read a business development book that is going to help me with professional development to complete, continue to move my business. Or instead of sitting in the car in the parking lot, I'm going to go for a walk around the parking lot and down the road, whatever that it's going to look like. Or maybe I'm going to do something for myself. Instead of just sitting in the car for an hour and a half or 45 minutes, maybe I'm going to go get a pedicure. 
doing something for yourself, taking advantage of the health benefits that you're having from not being on social media is going to be another great way to use this time. You also, is one of the other things that you want to make sure that you are doing when it comes to this is to train someone to take over the platforms. We talked about the fact that many of your businesses rely on social media, and I understand that. And I am not telling you, like I said, to just co- go complete cold turkey, never use these apps or platforms again. Instead, think about how you can potentially train someone. Create those SOPs, put those in place. And if you're unfamiliar with SOPs, go back in the episodes. I'm going to link to it actually in the show notes where we talk about SOPs, where you can actually then be able to train someone to step in and do what you do on a day-to-day basis. So having that SOP in place is going to make it that much easier. Where if you are looking to hire someone potentially full-time, part-time, even if you bring on your 16-year-old daughter's best friend, because I always hear from a lot of clients that their own kids, it doesn't work for them to work for them, but you probably know someone that it would be a great fit for, that they could be your VA for a little bit. They're going to get the experience. You could write offer to write them a letter of recommendation for college and also, of course, pay them. Where Instead of going to have to work at the local grocery store and have taxes taken out and only make a certain amount, plus use gas to get there, now they're able to stay at home and do social media for someone else. So the benefits are definitely going to be there. It's just going to be about you being able to train them so that you don't have to take a step away from it within your business, you're taking a step away from it personally for yourself. When this is also going through, in order to make the social media detox beneficial and work for you as that business owner, you have to have clear communication with team members. So whether this is just a virtual assistant that you are bringing on to take over certain aspects of social media, or if you were having a team that now you're telling them, listen, I am detoxing myself. I do not want to have to go into there. I want you to be able to handle everything that is sponsored. I want you to be able to handle any of the DMs that are happening. You have to be able to articulate to your team members what that is going to look like, how often you want them to check your DMs so that you can have those conversations. Um, When things are due for sponsored content, what it needs to look like, how it needs to be the copy, the hashtags, whatever is the deliverables that you have agreed to with the brand, what that needs to look like. So really having that clear communication is going to help as you do this detox. Because as I already had enlightened you to was that you are doing this detox for the health benefits, mental health benefits for yourself and for your family. And as we are spending more and more time home with our kids over the summer, potentially if you have little ones at home even during the school year, it's important that you're not getting triggered. We talked all about the benefits in it previously. So figuring out a way to be able to get those benefits for yourself is going to be important. And just finding little ways in order to put this into action is how it can make it that much easier for you. As always, I appreciate you all so much for listening in. If you haven't already taken advantage of my content marketing audit, please just do so. It is a free content marketing audit where if you leave a rating and review, I am going to go through your website, your social media, your email, and give you insights on how you can improve and make sure that everything ties together to represent you you and your brand. All you have to do is leave a rating and review on your favorite podcasting app. Send me a picture of it via Instagram to my DMs at Jenny underscore Melrose, and I will perform that content marketing audit. All right, you guys, until next time, I will see you all then.